Yun after I think 2019 was the last time na uh, we had a conversation. Of course, back then this was for GMA Network uh, with uh, former Senator Sonny Trillanes, also a fellow academic of mine. Both of us now teach in UP, so also a colleague. Uh, and, and 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 in many ways, thank you so much, uh, Senator Sonny Trillanes, for joining us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Richard, uh, for inviting me again. It is a um, show mo. Um, okay, bago tayo pumunta sa mga seryosong issue, bago pag-usapan ng mga, I don't know, fentanyl and, and pulvoron and all of that. Parang, sir, bumata kayo lalo ngayon. <laughs> Parang lahat mga bata ngayon. <laughs> oh, eh, nawala nang major stress. Oh, tapos yung term ni Duterte. So, siguro. <laughs> Kasi kahit si, si Senator uh, Delima rin kausap ko, ba ba sabi ko, Senator Delima, parang fresh dying. I mean, of course, her case is a bit extreme, no? Pero yeah. pansin ko, kahit yung mga iba off the record ko na mimit, parang bumata ka, parang bumata ka rin. Sabi ko, alam natin bakit. So, speaking of, you know, man of the hour or more like ex-president, uh, Rodrigo mm -hmm. Duterte. Before we go to the ICC issue and some of the issues that you have been very vocal about, bago tayong awayin ni Lahari Roque and the rest, um, let, let's go back. Remember, so back in 2018, nag-usap tayo. You, you told us very mm -hmm. interesting things on the record about Digong was considering you as a running mate even at some point. I mean, it, it, parang he was sending feelers to you even at some point. Can, can you tell us a little bit? Like, what's your context of uh, getting to know Digong, not like friendly basis, pero ano mga first major encounters mo sa kanya before he became the president? Recap okay. lang uh, doon sa mga hindi nanood na interview natin before, yeah. yeah. I, I think the first time kung siya na-meet uh, personally was no 2013 elections. Ah, right, right. Ang pagkakilala naman ng mga national politicians kay Duterte at that time is ano lang, no? parang general uh, dirty Harry reputation. Right. Pero hindi nyo naman... Ano, no? hindi yung to the extent na alam mo meron siyang uh, death squad na talagang pinapapatay. It's just parang before that, ganyan din reputation ni President Erap when he was uh, mayor of San Juan, ganyan din reputation ni, mm. ni Fred Lim nung siya mayor ng Manila. General, ganon. Then, uh, uh, nung 2016 elections, ano? uh, parating that was 2015, a common friend namin mm. um, arranged a meeting you know, uh, between Duterte and myself dito sa Ortigas. Ano? Kaya mali yung fake news yung sinasabi that I went to Davao to apply to be his vice president. Anyway, yung grupo kasi namin, yung Magdalo, wanted to really get to know no, yung mga prospective candidates for 2016. Right. So that's Mar Rojas, Senator Grispo, Si Binay, of course, so ganun. Ito si Duterte, unknown, ano siya eh, entity, mm. no? Except for the myth. So, dark horse, having, major dark horse oh, in the thing, yeah. Be, before we would uh, throw the, the, uh, kumaga, our support to sa isang kandidato, kailangan namin alamin. Hence that meeting, no? Mm. Um, kaso dun sa nag-meeting no, nag kami, right from uh, kumaga, from the start ng conversation, sinabi niya na, na hindi siya tatakbo. No? This was around April of 2015. Right. So remember, this guy kept on denying that he will, uh, that his, yeah. uh, no, that he will run. So, di deny niya. Until, yun na nga, December siya. So, nung time na nag-usap kami, he told me up front na hindi siya tatakbo. So, hindi talaga totoo that uh, mm. nag- uh, Ano to, nag apply ako for ano, hindi nga sa kandidat eh. Anyway, I took, I took advantage of that meeting just to get insights from yeah. the man, no? Kung ano ba talaga to, sinasabi na magaling, ano? Then, tinanong ko, ano bang mga pananaw nyo? Ano mga solusyon nyo sa mga problema ng bayan? Pero alam mo, dun sa one hour and a half na meeting namin, ni isang segundo ron, hindi niya dinivo sa pagbigay uh, ng uh, mga solusyon sa problema ng bayan. Ang mga pinento lang niya, mga kabastusan, no? mga, mga macho war stories, yeah, 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 mga pinapatay, yeah, yeah. Mga pinatay niya, mga gano'n. Banter, talk. yeah, mga ganyan. Yeah. 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 Akala niya, ma-impress ma ako sa mm. kanya, being a former soldier, nagpapa, yeah. ano siya, nagpapa ka, uh, macho, yeah. ano siya. Uh, siya yung mga war stories din niya. Kaso, so after that meeting, talagang negative yung impression ko sa kanya. Yeah. Because the meeting was intended for us to 
to know the man, titignan namin kung ano to. So I went back to my group. Sabi ko, mm, in the first place, hindi raw sa kandidato. Pero ang assessment ko is may problema to sa pag-iisip. Okay? Um, that's yeah. being honest. Kasi mm. normally, kung hitman ka, yung mindset mo, di ba? You, you kill people. But you don't really... Subtle up. ka. You're subtle, yeah. Oo, ito hindi. Talagang pinagmamalaki niya. So may, may problema ito on so many levels. Mm. So sabi ko nga, ang saving grace hindi raw sa tatakbo. So when this guy finally declared to run for president, yung buong conversation namin na yun that happened uh, months before, talagang came flooding back in. Na tipong, teka muna, hindi to pwede maging presidente ng Pilipinas. Di ba? Uh, may problema ito. So yun na ngayon, it became our advocacy to to really um, prevent him from from being president. But obviously, we failed at that. But of yeah. course, your first attempt at trying to prevent him from becoming the president is yung, yung bank account <clears throat> issue, di ba? At yes. uh, eventually, I'm not blaming you, pero nadama yung buong ABS-CPN, right? I think that's one of the... Re- I, related ba yan? Yung, yung mga no, no, expose no. mo, hindi, hindi siya related? Hindi siya related. Ganyan ito, no? Si Duterte... Um, magaling siya mag-mask. Mm. Maglalabas siya ng mga pretext to cover the real agenda. Yeah. In anything, i-justify niya yung, yung pagpatay sa mga tao, i-justify niya yung pag-ship, mag-ship niya sa China. Marami siya mga pretext. Ngayon yung pag-shutdown sa ABS, ang sinasabi niya was dahil naglabas daw ako ng negative ad, ABS-CBN daw yung Mm. Eh, GME 7, naglabas din ako ng negative ad eh. Yeah, alam ko, multiple ano, eh, channels. Eh, yeah. Eh. Yeah. Kaya, ano lang, mga palusot lang niya yan. But he really wanted to to get ABS-CBN. Sinake down lang niya para the offer will come. Kaso hindi binigay ng, ng Lopez family. Eh. Mm. Nung sinake down, tapos nag-offer sila, hindi tinanggap. No? Kaya tinulo yan. Mm. Sinat down. And anyway, yun lang yun. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, I just wanted to, for the for the purpose of clarity, diba, on, on, on that issue. Yeah. Now, obviously, hindi yun yung first time na you were pushing back against him. Of course, throughout his yeah. presidency, uh, at yeah. some point, mga na sobrang pikon niya sa'yo. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. ano yung nangyari? Nawala daw nila yung documents mo. <laughs> like, you know, na-pardon ka by Pinoy. Yeah. Like, how, like, how, I mean, was it as crazy as you thought you would be? Or was, was it just, I mean, you were already telling them my impression gonna you were expecting mm-hmm. that it will go that bad, di ba? And, and the whole thing in the Senate, kind of parang hindi namin alam kung susugurin yung Senado or hindi. Can you tell us a little bit about that episode also, Senator? Okay, before it got to that point, una muna, nag-attempt siya na ipapatay ako, no? And uh, inutusan niya, eh, si Miss, nung si Las Cañas, who... Uh, by some twist of events eh naging testigo no mm-hmm. so hindi natuloy yung assassination plot then nag-attempt sila to have to implicate me sa isang murder sa loob ng bilibid kaso some of the generals sa PNP who happens to be PNP graduates as well yeah. hindi hindi nila pinatulan sabi nila hindi hindi ano yan it will not hold so hindi they wanted Uh, a similar thing as yung kay Senator Dilima sa akin, no? Yeah. Kaso so hindi natuloy yun. Ngayon naghanap sila ng iba pang, ano, pwedeng ikaso sa akin. So wala kasi mahanap. So, ito nga si Kalida came up with this, uh, ano to, uh, brilliantly stupid Surreal. idea. <laughs> na inalify yung, ano ko, amnesty dahil nawala yung Documents. document. daw. Hindi naman na wala. No? Kahit na it was covered by the media and everything. So, gano'n na nangyari. Kasi wala nang, wala nang way. And the declaration itself was very specific. Right. I am ordering the AFP and PNP to arrest uh, Mr. Trillanes. You know? Pero, to his uh, dismay, hindi siya sinunod ng AFP kaya siya nagmaktol. Ano? Um, he was advised na if he would do that, um, hindi mang yung racks. So, Senator, I mean, this is without a prejudice, but my, my, my question here is, 
yung pagiging ex-military mo, and of course your father, a lot of them come from very honored ranks uh, in the armed forces of the Philippines. Did you think that that was giving you some sort of protection or, or that gives you an ex... I, I'm not questioning your courage. I'm just saying, didn't that give you extra courage or a sense na may konting hollow around you? Um, siguro, my background as a soldier gave mm. me that, ano, ano, yung yeah. parang... Um, Mental resilience. To, yeah. yeah, to confront uh, yung mga ganyang klase kaaway. And siguro, um, yung connection nga sa, uh, sa AFP, sa PMA, yun din naman, in a way, ang uh, nag, uh, mga sumalag dun sa mga ilang yeah. attempts ni ni Duterte kasi mga PMAs din ang nagsasabi sa kanya na wag nung gawin ito ganyan kaya nga siya na na frustrate na tipong um, he he was demonizing me he was belittling uh, kung ano man yung ginawa namin sa OPO din etc uh, tapos sinusumbat pa niya yung pag uh, increase ng salary pero still they did not turn against me no right right but uh, yun lang kasi no dahil nakikita naman nung nung uh, AFP officer core ko ano yung tama at mali yeah. you know, obviously ginagawa niya mas mali That's a very important point kasi para sa akin, uh, dalawang institutional letter M, tawag ko MNM, I think the media and the military during Duterte played a very, very important role. I mean, kudos to uh, General Anio, General Lorenzana, Secretary Lorenzana. I think mahalaga, for instance, yung meeting nila with uh, Lenny, di ba? Noong 2017, yes. when Digong was calling for all-out martial law. nag sila. I mean, multiple times Digong yes. was trying to bring in the military into drug war. So, the reason I'm saying this is because marami tayong mga kaibigan ng progressives or people na generally skeptical sa military. Alam mo naman yan na uh, Senator Chiliana. Yeah. So, I always remind them. I said, hindi perfecto yung armed forces of the Philippines. I'm sure like any military can raise issues. But do not forget, they were the last guardians in some ways of the Philippine democracy. Kasi kung tinig mo, Senator Chiliana, many people far less talented or far less aggressive than Duterte were able to completely overturn their system. I mean, the latest one is this millennial dictators na El Salvador, si Buk- uh, Bukele, di ba? So, mm-hmm. I think w- if the military stands at ground, it's very important for the protection of democracy. At kaya nga, I-, I like talking to you because you also have that kind of connection to the yeah. military. And, uh, and I'll be honest, uh, during that time, I also had constant conversation with the folks in the military, with Secretary Lorenzana, among others, because of my works at West Philippine Sea, which we'll discuss later on. Now, before tayo pupunta dito sa issue ng ICC, I want to ask, did you expect na eventually Duterte will be forced to finish his six-year term? Kasi di ba, yun yung anomaly kay Digong. If we describe him as a dictator, he's an interesting case of a dictator who actually had to eventually step down after a single term in office. And interesting, he even failed to engineer the succession because the daughter was in a very good position based on all surveys that we had. Can you tell me a little bit about etong end of the Duterte presidency and the failed engineering of the succession for her his daughter to come in. Of course, there, she's still there as a vice president, but I mean, I could I could imagine. Uh, can you tell me a little, about, a little bit about your your reading of that episode and also what was going through your mind? Because uh, uh, for a fact, alam ko may maraming traumatized nung time na yan, eh. yung tipong, mm-hmm. my goodness, uh, if hindi manalo si Digong, baka manalo si Marcos, manalo si Sara. I, mean, I, I remember very well many people were having a hard time coming to terms with things. At the same time, ako naman sinasabi ko, well, at least, he's not going beyond six years. Can you tell me your take on that? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, at the onset, si Duterte wanted to stay in power beyond the right. six-year yeah. term. Okay. nag attempt siya, flinote niya yung Revo- RevGov, di ba? Yung revolutionary yeah. government. nag attempt siya ng uh, um, charter change, di ba? Um, itong charter change, ang gusto niya mangyari, yung transition, yung transitory provisions that the executive will have legislative and judicial mm-hmm. power similar to what uh, the Cory Aquino Revolutionary had. government, essentially. Yeah, essentially oh, yeah, revolutionary president. Yeah, yeah. Oh, pero ito, through cha-cha. Yeah. No? Yun yung gagawin niya. No? Um, kaso hindi nga umubra. So, ginawa niya lahat. Nag-attempt siya yeah. mag-declare uh, ng martial law initially. Um sa Mindanao, gusto niya expand yun. Naghahanap siya ng pretext na anything right. just to justify that. It, hindi nangyari. No? And the, the thing about, uh, ano, na-mention mo, related din doon sa kanina sinabi mo, na yun, he went around camps, hinihikayat niya, sumama kay sa war on drugs, para nga 
magkakasabwat na tayo yeah, pag yeah. sumama kayo. Blood packed. Failed, I think blood yes. packed ang term dyan. Eh, diba? oh, yeah, yeah. What, what he failed to understand was, ano, kailangan ng, kahit maraming mga sundalo na ano, makaduterte, ah. mm. pero hindi sila makakasunod because of the chain of command. Mm. Ang konon, and we were uh, ano, no, engaging with uh, si, sila Secretary Lorenzana at the time, Um, nagkaano sila nagtipong kailangan ni nila ng black and white order mm. you must command right. pag sinabihan mo ng utos yung chief of staff ibababa yun kaso Duterte the coward and the wise ano, ayaw niya magbigay ng command kasi may liability siya right. so gusto niya yung mga pahapyaw and kayo na you will take the initiative eh, hindi ganun yun no? kaya uh, walang sumunod And uh, I remember no, kausap ko to si Senator Marco Rubio no, about cutting yung aid sa, ano nun, sa military and sa PNP. Sabi niya yung sa, milita- sa PNP, done deal na yun kasi talagang they became yeah. instruments of the, the EJ case. Pero yung sa military, tinatanong niya ako, should I do the same to the, the AFP? Kasi that time, chairman siya ng Appropriations Committee. Sa Senate. Yeah, yeah. Bro, yeah. Sa US Senate. Sabi ko hindi kasi hindi naman sa sumama eh. Hindi naman sumama. Tsaka right. ano naman, um, kailangan ng AFP ng, ng support pa rin ng, ng US kasi maraming mga security threats na ina-address. So that saved the day for the AFP yung hindi nila pagsama. And again, credit kay La ano yan, kina Secretary Lorenzana. Yeah, top kina, brass. Yeah. General Anyo and the, the rest, General Galvez. General Galvez, exactly, exactly. So, <coughs> so, hindi sila sumunod, no? Alam nila pa rin yung, ano. And ngayon, hindi rin sila implicated sa ICC. Had they done so, may mm. tama rin sila dapat. And also... So, si Duterte, right. Yeah. No, uh, so, so, ginawa, mm. ginawa niya talaga ito. Ni Duterte lahat, in-exhaust niya lahat. Pero nung... Alam mo, one thing also na nag-save siguro sa Pilipinas, and a silver lining to, no? kasi talagang tragedy yung COVID, yung pandemic mm. for everyone. Because of the pandemic, na nawalan siya ng two years eh, yeah. si Duterte sa pag-isip ng gagawin niya. And by the time we emerge from the pandemic, mag election fever na. Yeah. And uh, he didn't have any choice but to go to Plan C, which was the elections. Plano niya sana si Bongo, hmm. kaso hindi talaga marketable, no? Ano yun? Parang uh, ano, Vladimir Putin, Medvedev style yung ginawa sa Russia. Ganun, Kasi idol niya si Putin ganun. eh. So I won't be surprised. Yun yung, yung temporary ganun ikaw yun. president, oh. pero ako pa rin yung president as i-switch oh, natin. Parang remote control lang Re- itong isa. Mm-hmm. Oh. Kaso, eh hindi nga marketable. No matter how hard they tried, hindi talaga ma- malunok nung Pilipina yung prospects of a Bongo uh, as president, no? Um, kaya ito namang ito namang Sara eh just ano eh defiant ito as a, as a daughter makakontra na lang sa tatay niya hindi niya sinunod no ngayon uh, na-realize sila yung blunder nila mm. uh, but it's, it's too late tapos na so anong nangyari nanalo si si President Marcos by some uh, ano ba to? An unexpected turn of events. Turn of, very auspicious turn of events for auspicious, him. Kasi yeah. number, barely number 2, 3 lang siya sa... I know there was oh. a time si Isko pa nga yata mas bantas pa sa kanya or almost yes. statistically tied sila with Isko. So for someone to go from 13, 15% to 60%, yeah. that's that's quite a jump. Yes. And I'm saying this yeah. from solid north right now just to be... Yeah, I, oh. yeah so... The, But I I want to rewind back a little bit dito sa issue ng military because I think this has not been covered enough by let's be, let's be honest I think media progressive people there's always this kind of iffiness with the military pero ako kasi because of my nature of my work I'm very comfortable talking about military and, and giving them credit in fact isa sa op-eds ko sa New York Times was the title is not Duterte's army because my contention mm-hmm. always um, uh, Senator Trinas was that uh, Duterte never achieved yung tinatawag na subjective control. Uh, I mean, we can have some debates about whether totally intact yung professionalization. Unfortunately, some politicization happened. But I don't think he ever managed to fully co-op the top brass. Can you tell me a little bit what's your reading on that? Kasi uh, if, if I just stop with our analysis kanina, parang labas yan is Duterte was just too incompetent 
or not courageous enough to go to its logical limit. But that's just the supply side there. Eh? The other side is also, I don't think the top brass would have been also so open to what happened under Marcos Sr., well, when he totally politicized and subjectively controlled the military. Can you tell me a little bit about the other side also? Because I agree with the Duterte side. It takes competence yeah. to be dictator. He yeah. was just not competent enough, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that's one. And the other, you sinabi mo, he's not uh, courageous enough right, yeah. to, to uh, it, yeah. the military. Yeah, yeah. You know? Ang nakita ko, ano siya eh, uh, dito sa panahon kasi ni Pinoy na ano na, and during the latter part of the the GMA regime, nagkaroon ng mga maaayos na chief of staff eh, yun, sila General Liano, General right. Prado, right. so nag-spill right. over yan nung panahon na ni Pinoy, generally na-professionalize yung ranks. Yeah. Wala yung mga mga esperon types na talagang ano, na nagang hindi maayos just to display their uh, misplaced uh, This is the Bayanihan General Bautista time professionalization. General Bautista right? type. So exactly. talagang yeah. ito yung credit. mga yeah. snappy. Yeah. Oo, oh, ito yung mga snappy na tinatawag. Yeah. Ngayon, naka, naka, ano sila? Uh, yan, si uh, Eriberi, General Eriberi, then si na, ano na, General Anyo. You know? Ganon yung nangyari uh, na profession. But still, kung matibay-tibay yung dibdib ni Duterte, inupo niya yung mga yan, mm. sasabihin niya, ito yung situation, ganyan, ganyan. Um, they would have followed him. Believe me, they would have followed him. Ang problema ni Duterte was, nung pagpumasok kasi siya, nagkaroon siya ng uh, modus vivendi with the, with the RAC, with the communist yeah, movement. Yeah, yeah. Kaya nag-power sharing sila, di ba? Merong three Tatlo, cabinet yeah, yeah. secretaries. Yeah. So, ang problema niya noon, hindi niya mape-present yung communist bogey as a pretext sa AFP. Kasi ando doon sa kanya, siya mismo nag-appoint eh. So nag-own so, goal diba? siya. <laughs> nag-own goal siya in a way. Yeah. Oo. Kaya ngayon, hindi niya ngayon malabas yun. Alam niyo sa sa military, right. yung communist bogey ando doon yun. Kasi ano eh, yung indoctrination, yeah, talagang course, parang yeah, yeah. virus yan eh. Kita mo, na-realize lang nila yan during the end na tipong nung inihikayat niya yung AFP na patayin yung mga addicts, hindi sumusunod. Pero nung eventually sinabi niya, o oh, patayin niyo to, mga NPA to, ginawa. Mm. Pero it was too late. Wala na. Um, papunta na talaga sa 2022 elections at that time. Pero ganun yan. Had he sat down with them, kung tinibayan niya yung loob niya, Present niya, sasama yun. Kung Rebgob man, Rebgob, Marcelo, Marcelo, sasama yun. But yun nga, he was not competent enough, he cannot present a plan, and he was not courageous enough. Uh, decisive enough. I mean, them. I mean, that's one of yun. the paradoxes of Digong. No? Like, everyone voted for yeah. him because he was supposed to be the decisive guy. And yet, you know, for some of us who bother to follow him or write on him constantly, parang ang daming moments of indecision. I mean, just look at the response to pandemic. Ay, okay lang yan. At hindi okay yan. Over lockdown. I mean, you could see very arbitrary. Sabog. I mean, just to be honest about it, to use the term. I think that's the correct term. But last point on this one. Again, uh, Senator Trias, I'm talking about this because I feel, especially in our circles, no, um, hindi masyadong inappreciate yung role ng military. I, I just, I want to keep on coming back to this and I think you're the perfect person to talk to, diba? Um, what about the role of the U.S.? Don't you think that Duterte also always was worried na hindi ko maano to kasi may U.S. element. And I'm, I don't mean it in a necessarily negative way. I mean in terms of institutional linkages, indoctrination. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> how important was the U.S. element? And I'm asking you because, you know, you, you, you constantly dealt with Marco Rubio and all of the security uh, elite in, in America. Yeah. Well, it was very important. And mm-hmm. tama yung ano mo, no? Ando doon at the back of Duterte's mind yeah, is yeah. Ipagka, if he would push too far, baka mag-backfire sa kanya. But ano to, sinubukan niya. Actually, inopen niya for the first time. May military schooling sa China. no? Yeah, military yeah, schooling know, sa yeah, China. So that, yeah. para ma-co-op, matanggal yung, right. yung ano, um, over uh, ano ba, um, dependence sa, sa US. Yeah. Kinat niya yung, ano, di ba, yung EDCA, hininto niya, binadmouth niya yung US. dami niyang ways eh, kung paano niya influensya yung, yung AFP. But still, naka, nakalagay sa, ano eh, 
uh, ugat eh naka uh, ando doon na eh um, masyado nang malalim yung ugat na hindi niya na, na approve yeah. kaya in the end yung relationship na yon ando doon kahit na wala sa national policy level pero yung person to person relationship ando doon the 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 US uh, uh, military leaders were um, directly connecting with the Philippine yeah. uh, I don't know uh, military leaders binabypass na yung usual channels like yeah. DFA and the national government diretso kaya kung magpush siya no tipong magrev gob siya eh baka mapapasukan sila ng person to person relationship na yon to pull yeah. them right to the side of democracy and, so and, and, and let's not forget the, of course this is the time of Trump we we're talking about mostly diba i mean naabutan lang niya kay yeah. Obama sa dulo and I think deep inside the Duterte knew Trump is someone you don't mess around with. I mean, I don't think Trump could yeah. afford to lose a treaty ally to China in the midst of everything. Siguro, I mean, I, I, we both know stuff, but we'll just say it off the record na lang. But, oh, but you know, I have my own information also na it's not like yung Americans ay naka-opo lang, di ba? Uh, and in fact, we yeah. interviewed some of them, some very top officials uh, dun sa yeah. ibang shows ko and all. So... That's why I ask about the U.S. element. So I understand that it looks like we share also similar reading on this issue. Again, I, civil-military relations, very important. People always forget a democracy survival is hinged on a healthy, robust civil-military relations, or at least the military not being fully co-opted. So yun ang feeling ko mahina sa... Yun ang kahinaan ng usual analysis ng Philippine uh, politics and democracy during Digong. Now, balik tayo dun sa... Eto na. Um... Because ito na, papunta na tayo sa Bardagulan part, the whole fentanyl and all of that. Um, Before asking you whether you agree with BBM and all, the, the other thing I also keep in mind, uh, Senator Trillianis, is, you know, if you look at a lot of successful populists, whether it's Modi, Ardoan, um, I can go on and on, most of them came to power in their 50s or 60s. Mm-hmm. Duterte came in pretty late in his uh, life, so... Do, do you think there was also the aspect of he was not at his best version, to put it nicely, di ba? Mamay na natin pag-usapan yung mga accusations ng iba. Do you think there was also that aspect? Kasi I think kailangan na medyo bata-bata ka pa para, you know, you push for very high-risk kind of moves. Eh. Um, like Marcos Sr. Marcos Sr. was doing this in his 40s and 50s, right? Uh, Modi, the same thing. I mean, I'm thinking of all of these successful strong men or full dictators in the case of Marcos Sr. Uh, do you think that was also possibly an aspect? I mean, I'm talking about the human aspect also of this, diba? Um, pwede, but uh, I, I think it wouldn't have mattered um, <laughs> kung yeah. talagang... Congenial ano, talaga, yeah. Uh, yun nga, kung competent siya, no? tsaka kung uh, matiba yung dibdib din niya. Kasi ano siya, eh, nagbabluff siya, eh, nakikita mo eh. Yeah. Magaling siya magbluff, pero pagka... Uh, kinol yung bluff niya, nag-back down siya eh. Hindi niya alam yung ginagawa niya eh. So, uh, may mga gano'n na, na paradox nga uh, si si Duterte. Um, ang nakita ko, yung sa age kasi, um, even nung time eh, sinasabi na, oh, may sakit na raw, gano'n. Uh, based sa in- information namin from the inside, ano, nung uh, security group niya, Talagang wala. He was never ano, at risk na... Eh, Yun din alam ko. Eh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was... Yun. Pa, so, stem cell yata mm-hmm. siya. Eh. Alam, alam ko parang nag stem cell siya. Eh. Mm-hmm. Yung time na medyo umiiba yung kulay na. Alam ko regeneration mm-hmm. after stem cell siguro yan or something. So wishful thinking. Yeah. I think there was a lot of wishful thinking. Yeah. Um, so yeah. ano siya? Um, ginagamit niya yung card na yon when it's convenient mm-hmm. for him. Pero pag... Uh, you mean paawa? Ano, you mean paawa effect? Paawa siya? Paawa. Na matanda na ako, ganyan na ako, yung gano'n. Oh. Oh, yeah. Ginagamit niya yun when, uh, when it's convenient for him. Pero generally, hindi siya naging factor kasi yung presentation niya nun, di ba? Palaging, oh, imurahin niya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he, ano siya, he tries to intimidate people, hindi mo, hindi nakikita yung age niya eh. Di ba? But yeah. yes, uh, it, it could have been a factor, mas siguro mas uh, decisive siya kung ano, yeah, I'm kailangan just saying, pa niya. Oh, kasi, kasi the reason I'm saying is because may manakausap ako from Davao, na not necessarily his fans. Mm. Uh, 
And they were saying, actually, kung namit mo si Digong nung 40-year-old, 50-year-old pa siya, yung makulit-makulit pa siya, sabi niya, alam mo, ang daldal yan. At saka, matalino. I mean, kahit ayoko sa kanya. Mat- I mean, I'm hearing from these people na hindi fan ni Digong. So, the, a part of me was thinking, maybe it's also because he was not at his sharpest, if I can put it nicely. But this is, I think, a perfect transition to what's happening now. Kasi, grabe yan. I mean, it's not like surprise, surprise, Digong attacking BBM. He was doing that from the very day na alam niya BBM is gunning for the for the Malacanang. In fact, 2021 pa lang, may article na ako na the House of Duterte is, you know, shadowing the House of... So, we, we, we've been seeing this happening. Na dalawang, ano, diba? It's like a it's like a zoo without fences, right? Like, if you put a tiger and lion, it's just inevitable. In this case, ag- agila at tigre, diba? Um... Are you surprised by how crazy things are, even by what we would have expected? Diba? I mean, to openly go there, the son saying, Magresign na si Digong, the father coming out and saying, Drug addict tong president, the calling on the military to, I don't know, join some secession, whatever. And this is very important because General Anio, I Secretary Anio, yeah. Secretary Galvez, all of them very strongly came against this Mindanao secession, which, which goes back to what we were discussing a while ago this professionalism of these men in uniform, or ex men in uniform in that matter. What is your read of that? Isn't this even too crazy by I don't know Digong standards, or, or you're saying, well, it is it is really what we should have expected. Well, based on our uh, monitoring, you know, etong latest outburst ni Digong non January was actually the the fourth time, fourth attempt niya na to oust uh, uh, Marcos. No, there was this January thing. Um, yung yung resignations sa BND ah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. then yung May yung uh, uh, tambalos loss issue yeah. yan impeachment tapos yun yung noong October yung um, calling on the AFP to audit yung Congress yeah. tapos itong Paul Boron itong Paul Boron I believe uh, na overestimate ni ni Digong yung ano niya eh um Nag, sila na ngayon yung naging victims ng echo chamber effect eh. He drank his own um, cool aid. Tuma- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. So, dun sa social media group nila, so, talagang napakainit nila. True. And we were monitoring it. Sabi ko, masyadong, ano na to, oh. highly charged na yung yeah, yeah. kanila. Pero sa labas, everything was normal. The mainstream, walang yeah. ano. So, kala nila, puputok na yun. No? They were... Eh yun, yung na, nakuha nila itong isang uh, general na retired, tapos itong si Captain Enrique na nagmamanifesto ko ano-ano. Akala nila talagang ito na. Wait, can, can I zoom like, can ex-official withdraw their support? I mean, ex ka, ano, anong, yeah. anong ambag ng withdrawal? Oh. So, I'm sorry, it's funny, yeah. but I want to ask you. <laughs> yeah. But ako naman, ayokong i-underestimate yun kasi nakikita ko yung mga chat yeah. groups na yun, yung so, mga right. military, yung uh, nagkaroon sila ng initial manifesto, marami yun eh, 100 plus. Ano? Nakaka-ano yun eh, nakaka-influence yun dun sa, sa active eh. Yeah. Ang problema, ang problema nun was yung Paul Boron video was all a lie. Yun ang problema nila. And they were expecting, assuming there was one, ano talaga yun? Magkakaroon ng, yeah. ng instability yun. Yeah. People will will start uh, questioning, you know? magkikreep in yun eh sa, yeah. sa ranks. Pero hindi, it was a lie. Just like the sex video of uh, Senator Dilima, ginawa lang ni Duterte, sinabi lang niya. But the difference was, when he was president, yung bully pulpit niya, talagang can reach the far corners of the the country and it was repeated so often na walang pushback na yung mga naka, nakarating nung balita na yun, nakahagip ng balita na yun. Yeah, parang classic Gables na if you repeat a, a lie over and over again, oops, if you repeat a lie over and over again for a thousand times, uh, it's gonna look like a truth. Mukhang na-disconnect tayo ni Senator Trilliana sa one second lang, guys. Mukhang, <laughs> baka may nagalit kay Senator Trilliana sa one second.
Wait lang guys, ha, biglang <laughs> Mukhang mas- nakikita niya, pati ako nagbablush na ako eh <laughs> Mainit talaga ang usapan to, even by my standards, mainit ito Grabe rin pagkausap si si Sonia, si Senator Trillanes uh, By the way guys, pwede niyo check by the way, sure sure uh, Pwede niyo check yung um, uh, interview ko sa kanya sa YouTube uh, Hindi ko alam, baka sinabutahe yung ano namin uh, <laughs> Yung interview na, mainit-init na. Ba't ako nagbo-blush na ako? Hindi, pakicheck guys yung uh, interview natin with Senator Sonny Trillanes. Um, dyan sa YouTube, I think you can find it. Nung nasa GMA Network pa ako. Uh, so, we discuss a lot of these issues. But of course now, uh, mas interesting ang mga bagay-bagay dahil ang dami mga developments na nangyari. So, papunta na tayo guys sa interesting part na ngayon. Papunta pa lang tayo sa interesting part. Uh, biglang ano... Oo, oh, oh, di ba? Akala nyo kami lang ni R&R na Ronald Liamas lang ang ano, very open and all. Pero actually, grabe din yan si Senator Trillanes. So, matapang din. Very matapang. So, kaya nga sabi ko, we have to have this kind of conversations. Oh, ayan, mukhang sinasabotay ka na ba, Senator Trillanes? <laughs> ayan na, andyan na si, ano. Ayan, andyan na si Senator Sinasabot tayo at tayo ah. <laughs> oh, hi. Ay, sinasabot tayo at tayo. Hindi, <laughs> na ano yung ano, hindi pala nakaplug na maayos yung chargers. So, ah, tsaka yeah. low bat pala kayo. Okay, okay. Good, good. So okay, let's, I'll put this under the kind of second episode na kind of ish. No problem. Actually, ang dami natin na-discuss. Okay, guys. Uh, of course, in the previous episode ish, we discuss about the Gong's presidency, how Senator Trillanes dealt with the quote and quote uh, not so you know <laughs> nice times and then bakit bumata bata siya ngayon so now we're we're discussing the i don't know end game ba to or ano ba to harakiri political harakiri what phase we are in etong bardagulan na nangyari sa ex unity we're trying to understand why is Duterte doing what he's doing so one of the theories i put forward is literally yung Nixon madman theory right again assuming logical siya it's a big if i'm just saying if assuming logical siya I would argue that baka ang ginagawa niya dito is he's threatening hell and he's threatening burning down the house because his concern is eventually baka yung ICC will come after him or the news will keep on tightening around him. Like, what's your read on that, Senator Trillanes? I mean, in the previous episode, we discussed the man, the moment, his algorithm. <laughs> Having said all of these things, anong basa mo ngayon? Is this a madman theory or mad max lang siya ngayon? <laughs> ginagawa niya? I, I, I... Ako ay agree, you know, with uh, your your theory. Yeah. Um, may scorched earth mindset yan eh, mm, si Duterte. Right. Uh, hindi ito, so, uh, uh, he will burn the house right? down just to yeah, exactly. pursue his own agenda. Yeah. And ano ito, um, uh, I agree na lahat yan pretext, yung sinasabi niya, yeah. si Session, and ano, um, kung ano man, ano, again, sa, sa People's Initiative, lahat yan pretext, kasi ang ultimate, ano niya, uh, agenda is gusto niya mag he wants to play this brinkmanship game with the, the Marcos administration right. na tipong I will burn the house down if exactly. you will have me arrested yes, exactly. so you'll have to talk ganun yan yeah. exactly right si yun Duterte, eh. yeah. Yeah, exactly yun din ang exactly. oh. or if yung anak ko lalo yung ganunin or yung budget oh. ng Davao I, I, I mean you can see what's going on here right again I'm, I'm assuming so, he's logical yeah. about this in a certain way yeah yeah, ano yan? Um, si, si Duterte, ano yan? Uh, wise yan. Ano? Shrewd. Uh, shrewd. Deliberate oh. siya. Oh, yeah. Shrewd. So, may, may method dun sa madness. madness projection niya. So, we have exactly um, the same read. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, pagka, pagka na-profile mo siya ng maayos, ma, mape-predict mo na yung mga steps niya. Yeah. And ito nga yun, itong ginagawa niya. Uh, gusto niyang i-blackmail o i-hostage itong admin into getting uh, his way, which is maiwasan yung ICC arrest niya. So it's all about that at this point. Kasi early on, talagang he wanted, ano eh, ako, ang tingin ko rito, um, yung earlier attempts niya to oust uh, Marcos, Ano ito eh, this is primarily to protect yung criminal enterprise niya kasi nag-collapse na eh, no? Michael Yang is twisting in the wind, uh, nahinto na yung ano nila, uh, drug trade, itong mga police na 
part ng sindikato nila na nalagay na sa freezer and uh, dismissed na administrative. So he needs an insurance. That's what you're arguing. He needs an insurance. Yes. This was all. But, no. but uh, again, uh, Senator Trilas, yeah. he, he never trusted the insurance, right? He always lambasted the Marcos, especially BBM, weak leader. He was already making insinuations. Yeah. And naalala ko dun sa isa sa highlights ng speech niya, quote-unquote speech niya, was... Etong tinata, eto yung this is the moment I feared, di ba? Yung sinasabi niya, di ba? So parang sinasabi na, anticipate niya na mangyari ito, which I think is a perfect segue to my question right now. Let's talk about BBM. Parang Star Wars muna tayo. I-freeze muna natin etong yeah. denuma, etong bardagulan. Rewind tayo ng konte. Let's talk about BBM. What is your read of the situation of BBM? I mean, of, of course, you come from a family of military people. So, uh, you know, if you come from military background, medyo naintindihan mo yung Marcoses. Ako, because of my Ilocano background, I also understand the Marcoses. So, I think both of us were among the few people early on na not necessarily perhaps his fan, but we're always fair. Na parang, no, 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 BBM is, is he's not gonna go the wrong way. And in fact, if he's gonna follow his father, it's not gonna be in a dictatorial way. I wanna get your your take on, on BBM. What is your understanding of BBM's rise to power? And then this steady, systematic, and now dramatic conflagration in his uh, uni team with the Dutertes? Well, pag nakita mo, you know, from the time that, uh, let's say, sabihin mo na, do, during his heyday, you know, nung uh, nag-aaral siya sa Princeton, may $10,000 allowance siya every month. So, he was living a princely lifestyle, no? Right. Tapos, imagine being uh, hold off to to Hawaii may nakasakay kayo sa uh, nakaupo kayo sa bench sa C130 yeah. flight papuntang Hawaii ang hirap noon it's go it's a very uncomfortable yeah. trip na imagine mo what what's going through their minds na tipo all of that yeah. nawala na tapos pagdating niyo sa Hawaii kinonfiscate yung mga belongings niyo doon kayo sa isang bungal ko mga talagang nilagay siya sa lupa no and it was a very long journey no it was uh, very humbling uh, experience sa kanila na bumalik siya, uh, nanalo siya sa Congress, pero he was never treated seriously kasi yeah. wala na yung father niya. Noong 1995, he lost, di ba? Yeah. Uh, sa Senate, then kumaga napakahaba nung, nung ano nito. Rehabilitation, nung, uh, return to power. Oh, yeah. But, but na, before, pero, yeah. Sir, sir I, yeah. I want to ask you more. Yeah. Kasi nagsabayan niya kayo sa Senate, di ba? You were, yes, next so, event, so I want to ask you later on. But before that, no, no, you're making a very good point. Because actually, I'm now working on a book about the return of Marcus. For me, something happened there during the Hawaii years. I think there was some sort of soul searching. Because uh, yes. his father also passed away during this time, na, you know, the Hawaii years. So I think he... Because, yes. right, he's the only one in military suit, na camouflage. The mm-hmm. Edsa days. And... and I think our good friend si Manuel Quezon the third called him the last hawk. May training yan, di ba? Sa army, special forces yes, or something uh, along those lines. Yeah. yeah, so he was kind of, you know, medyo matapang din, medyo katulad mo siguro. But, but I think something happened during... So, yes, he was princeling and you can say all of those things. Mm-hmm. But at some point, he became, like, overcompensate siya. He became this hawkish guy. Yeah. So, ang basa ko is exactly like yours. The Hawaii years that climb from, I don't know, the zardom to humiliation and then the yeah. passing of his father. I think it did something to him in terms of soul-searching and the fact that he didn't successfully immediately return to national politics. So I'm 100% with you. I think we have very similar reading on him. So now, now eventually, he makes it to the national politics as a senator and pretty smoothly. Can you tell us a little bit about your own direct encounters with him when you were colleagues in the Senate? And And... Pinoy was also there, right? Quite an interesting world, right? No. I, um, um, he was... I, the Pinoy Pala was the president, oh. Pala, sorry, by the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah he was, was oh, Sorry about that. Yeah, and he was the president, I, yeah. Yeah. And I believe, no, no. Uh, Puntaan ko lang yung... Nung panahon ni Pinoy, I believe they were expecting the worst kasi in, 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 tinitignan niya na, na ano yun, alam mo yung uh, rivalry ng uh, Marcos and Aquinos, yeah. di ba? Then nung presidente si Pinoy, he was expecting the worst. But to his surprise, hindi siya binenggahan, ano? hindi siya binalikan yeah. ni, ni Pinoy. And I think, nag, ano rin yun, nagkaroon din ng imprint sa kanya yun. Mm, And uh, even before that, ano, um, one thing na hindi nila nakita or na-overlook was during the time of GMA, 
yung Marcos family, bumoboto yun sa impeachment ni GMA. Ah. Yes, Every true. time. Very good. So, Very good point. they were with the opposition. Magkakasama din kami sa opposition at the time. Yeah, even yung panahon ni GMA. So, may ganun na, ito naman, bunga naman ito siguro nung rivalry nung Makapagal and right. ano, di Marcoses. No? May ganun. Pero nung panahon nga ni Pinoy, magkasama kami, um, low-key lang yan si, si President Marcos. Yeah. Ama kami sa nasyonalista, uh, we ha- we've had uh, uh, a few events uh, together, ano? may cruise pa kami kasi si Senator Manny Villar, the party president, may mga cruise yung nasyonalista. So may mga ganong bonding. You know? Interesting. We had this, uh, uh, ano, um, was this uh, study visit sa, sa Singapore, kaming tatlo nila, Senator Lee. The, right, right. We studied the different the uh, uh, departments <laughs> ng yeah. ano ng uh, na Singapore. So may mga ganon na ano and ano siya. Um, talagang nag-aaral siya. Gusto niya ma- malaman. Tapos hindi nga siya ano yung uh, basat lowkey, lowkey lang siya. So okay, no ganon. Pero yung nga hindi siya binalikan ni Aquino ni President Noy Noy Aquino which he was expecting na mangyari. Wow. Kaya nga makita mo ngayon, yung in his time, sabi mo nga, yun nga, during the Hawaii years na lagay sila sa lupa, it was humbling. Right, right. Marami siya lang lessons learned. Nakita niya siguro din na, in a way, na-admit niya yung mga pagkakamali nung, nung tatay niya, ganun. So ngayon, he wants to prove them wrong. No? Kaya kami, ako in particular, I can speak for myself. Right. We were with the uh, VP Lenny during the last elections. We were expecting the worst kasi nga Marcos Duterte baka pagpatuloy yung Duterte policies, baka yung uh, Marcos ano alam mo yung trademark na strongman rule course, yeah. ma- mag lumabas. Pero I was pleasantly surprised, surprised no? Yeah. Uh, na tipong kuminto yung EJK for one may restore yung democratic institutions, yung freedom of the media, freedom of the press. Tapos yung foreign policy, nag, nag-shift. Doon tayo natuwa sa kanya, let's be honest. I think oh, that was so, the be- biggest pleasant yeah. surprise, I would say. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. kumbaga, tapos ito ngayon, hinuhuli na, no? si Bantag, inano, uh, tinanggal. Dati mga sacred cows ito, si Tebes, mm. si Tebes is a distributor correct, correct. ng droga ni Duterte yan sa Western Visayas kaya right, right. naging ano yan eh naging nama, namayag pag yan ano pero inano tinanggal nila kumaga nakikita mo these are good signs then yung 18 senior PNP officers involved sa drugs tinanggal and ano ito again this is a big departure from the yeah. Duterte policies kaya ano uh, maganda then finally ito na ngayon yung paglabas ni ni Senator De Lima, di ba? Kalabas eh. Then, itong uh, development sa ICC. So, ano siya? Um, we're seeing... So far, so, um, so far okay in a way. I mean, so far, yeah. you know, I would say pretty okay. Yeah. Oh, but of course, hindi yan perfecto. Just like any other administration, if you want to meet pick, eh talaga meron ka mapapansin. But by and large, yeah. the democratic space was restored. And it's very important for us. Di ba? Mm. Sige, mag tayo sa mga polisiya. Okay yan. But the democratic space must be restored first. And it was restored. And uh, mm. uh, yun yung na, na, nagustuhan natin doon. Well, I mean... Uh, I agree with you, although of course I would also add that, yes, I mean, I agree that he's so far a constitutionalist. In fact, the joke is, uh, I mean, BBM Dilaw, you know, like there are jokes around those lines. I think your your comment about Aquino not going after him, leaving a good impression, siguro reinforcing his soul searching. Because yeah. just like Aquino, he could be a besieged, paranoid, right, guy. Yeah. But once he realized yeah. the world is not as crazy as it is, and in yeah. fact, you can have a modus vivendi, he realized actually yeah. you can live life in a more sober and steady way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, I have concerns with the Chacha. We can discuss that a little bit later on when we discuss the opposition. I have concerns with the Maharlika Fund. I have concerns with the Well, there was never an open apology for what happened during the, the, the dictatorship years. But the counter argument to that is he cannot do it openly because of my legal exposure. Yeah. That's one version I heard. Now, he cannot ever openly say it because I'm exposing Nana in I'm exposing family in They have court cases in the US. But what you're saying is, in his own way, this is his 
I don't know, redemption. This is his way of, I don't know, trying to fix things in, the, in a cynical uh, PR way. But let's talk about it because now that we're at this crucial juncture, the usual criticism, and I'll be very transparent about it. I've transmitted it to our friends, you know, in the government. Is, is my pakka conflict avoidance si Bibia minsan na... I mean, maybe unfair to say that, but there are times that you want him to show a little bit of, you know, because ang karap mo dito eh, are no jokers. Eh. We've spent the whole episode discussing the algorithm of Digong. And it looks mm-hmm. like those people are not going to go gently into the night. They're not just going to accept a secondary role in Philippine politics. Forget about total marginalization. Don't you think the BBM is, should show a little bit of hawkishness? Not dictatorial, not authoritarian, but he has to be a little bit push. Or maybe you're implying suave niya ginagawa and it's just a matter of time before the hammer comes down. Like the Democles sword is coming slowly down, but like Kill Bill. Is that, I think, what, what you're gonna, we're implying here? I, I that don't so. expect the hammer to come down like Thor, yeah. Hindi mo, hindi mo maririnig yan sa kanya, mm. but it's going to go down just the same. Diba? Mm. How it's done, behind the scenes, or kung ano man yung circumstances, basta hindi mo yan makikita. I believe, in-embrace niya na tong ganitong brand of politics na uh, friends to all, enemies to none um, approach niya. Diba? Even na sa Senate doon, sa... Ano, wala, wala siyang... I, I disagree with you, Senator. I think it's love the Philippines. I think it's more yung ng team niya, love the Philippines. Love, love, love. I think yun yung team ah, ni Vivian. Ganito na lang. Basta party, party. Good party. vibes. vibes. Good oh. vibes lang. Good vibes oh, okay. lang. Oh, good vibes. So, in-embrace niya na yun eh. But it doesn't mean na uh, nothing is happening behind the scenes. Kasi, mm-hmm. uh, remember, si, si Digong, may pinanggagalingan yung panic niya, yung paranoia sure. niya. Oh, may nararamdaman yan. Di ba? Okay. So, yun, yun. And, ito, gusto ko lang balikan yung punto na yun na yung dumabas si Paste, si na uh, Sarah Pulong, lahat-lahat, then siya eventually. So, it's either na, na ano sila doon, naging victim sila doon sa echo chamber effect na yeah. akala nila highly charged na lahat. Or, talagang meron na silang mga inexpect na mga elemento that encourage them to do what they did mm-hmm. di ba mm-hmm. but unfortunately so far hindi siya na hindi ko magat kasi alam namin eh na may mga pinagalaw silang mga retired Duterte generals na talagang who have been attempting to to uh, recruit or persuade the active members of the AP to to join the ranks may mga na-identify nga na mga active PNP regional directors na sumama na sa kanila uh, pero just the same wala yung ano eh hindi wala siya sa sa mainstream eh hindi hindi na ano ng ordinaryo yung Pilipino hindi naramdaman yung walang resonance sense of walang resonance oh, yeah walang resonance wala eh. yeah. so kahit nang init na init na siya but by and large people were just uh, living their uh, daily lives no kaya kaya kailangan pa ring bantayan titingnan natin ano ano ito what's what's next but for sure si Duterte will not stop until makaupo si Sara or kung magkagulo-gulo man he doesn't need to give it to Sara eh siya na uupo hmm. pag nagkagulo-gulo um, siya na uupo bakit pa niya bibigay kay Sara kasi ibang grupo yan pag naupo sila Sara outside di ko lang puri naman yung mga tao nila eh yeah kasi iba yung click ni Sara. So kumbaga, right. um, these things are, are in in play. But then going back to sinasabi mo yung kung may um, hawkish nature ba si si BBM na kailangan niya ilabas. Good Machiavelli I as think, a former professor. Uh, good Machiavelli. Can he be a good Machiavelli? I, I think um, ang pinakang ano dyan, yung true, ano ano, uh, yung true sentiment may kita mo kay sa demeanor ni ni first lady uh, Marcos yeah. nung inisnab si ano si Sara yun sa departures yun to Vietnam yeah pretty oh, portraits yun na yun yeah. si si BBM can do the social niceties but smoothing uh, yeah, yeah. Mm, but uh, alam mo yung sentimento what what the what type of conversation that's happening 
in their household. Yeah, in the diba? first, and it's first not, uh, family's household. Flattering. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I want to, of course, discuss also where the opposition should stand on this issue. Diba? Yeah. Kasi ang laki ng debate ngayon. May mga opposition na never Marcos. So, yeah. at the end of the day, they're still skeptical about BBM. They feel na this is just a... This is a, I don't know, wolf in a sheep's clothing. Uh, this PI, mm-hmm. People's Initiative thing, is part of a regime change strategy. Now, at the end of the day, BBM might turn out as the bigger threat, uh, even though so far. And then there's the Never Duterte group, you know, who are saying, no, 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 no. At the end of the day, BBM is a constitutionalist, at least so far. He respects the West mm-hmm. Philippine Sea, at least in terms of policy positioning. Or at the very least, you can hold his feet close to fire. It's like when Bernie Sanders endorsed Hillary. Parang hindi ko siya type. Uh, hindi ko siya gusto mm. pero at least reasonable siyang kausap unlike Trump yeah. diba? so so yung ganyan logic um what is your what, what is your stance on this issue because we have friends uh here, right and left coming out with counter arguments kasi nakita ko may times sa mga DDS they're trying to court the never Marcos side of the opposition diba na oy against eh, diba biglang against corruption na sila for auditing na sila ng ano diba yung yung SMN9 sa yung positioning nila tapos bayani daw sila sabi ni Harry okay you must you must, like this is this is sounding weird like good governance agenda na kayo bigla diba kaya ang biro ko yan naging opposition lang yung iba kasi hindi binigyan ng position uh, to to simplify it diba what is your read on this where should the pink movement stand on this. The reason I'm asking is not because you're pink per se, but you were allies with Lenny. And, you know, I'm not hearing much from Lenny. Maybe you know more about her. her. We hear a lot from Risa, from Franz Castro, yeah. a lot of others. But, Iko, in your humble opinion, where do you think should the opposition stand? Because, oh, personally, I'm a bit skeptical of the PI Chacha thing. But I'm even more okay. critical on the issue of the need for ICC to come in uh, because that's a bigger problem. I also support the direction of our foreign policy by and large. So it's a kind of an I some issue here, some issue there. Where do you think opposition should stand, Senator? Ay, well, ganito, no? Sa, sa amin, sa Magdalo Group, uh, in, hinimay na namin to. And we defined, ano ba yung san ba yung national interest dito? Mm. Okay, dito sa existential, uh, existential issue of uh, the attempts of the Duterte's to oust the Marcos uh, administration. Maliwanag dito yung national interest na dapat matapos na Marcos administration yung term niya until 2028. Because any interruption to that uh, term would mean Sara Duterte ascending to the presidency. Pag nangyari yan, believe me, uh, the, the democracy... Uh, the Philippine democracy, again, is at risk. Ma- baka mawala na yung 2028 elections. Iba ito. Iba yung temperament ng, hmm. ng Duterte's and iba pa yung temperament uh, ng Sara Duterte na which, which could be worse ano? uh, in the sense na wala itong sense of humor at may shorter temper ito. No? So, kumbaga, short, shorter fuse. So, Less confidence, yung, unlike yung dad niya na may humor, uh, he can, you, may, may like audacity. Yeah, yeah. Pero pareha sila ng mindset, ano? Mm-hmm. scorched earth, tsaka yung, yung kanilang uh, pag-use ng violence. No? Sanay na sanay sila dyan. So anyway, yung, when faced with that, napakaliwanag sa amin. You cannot uh, side with the Dutertes kasi babalik na naman tayo dun sa nightmare of, of, the, of the past six years, no? 2016 to 2022. We do not want to risk that from happening. So yun yun. Ngayon doon sa issue naman ng PI, maliwanag din na hindi rin naman, that's not the way to go. Mm. Ako, I'm also in favor of amending some provisions of right. the Constitution. But the, the, may, may ways to do that. And I think itong uh, resolution of both, both houses approach is the way to go. Kasi you can deal with Uh, the amendments on a piecemeal basis. No? Parang, right. eto, amend ito so that pag nagplebisito, alam nung mga tao kung ano yung pinagbabotohan nila, right. hindi yung wholesale revision. No? Um, yan yun. Right. Okay. Tapos, itong sa iba pang issue, policy-wise, ano na lang yun? Eh, diba, diba? Pero ito, existential ito eh. Pagka tinanggal, pagka pinatalsik yung Marcos administration by whatever means, that would mean Sarah assumes as president. Then therefore, ihinto ulit yung EDCA. Then the yeah. 
Beijing would again have a a huge say in uh, uh, domestic politics and domestic policy making. So yan na yon, no? And hindi pwede yon mangyari. Kaya um kung yung ano to, I mean, what's your term? Uh, never Marcos, mga never Never Marcos, Marcos versus never Duterte kasi nasa split oh, yung, yung mga, opposition eh. Oh. Oh. Yung mga never Marcos, ako in, sinasabi ko sa kanila yon. Mm. Kung kung ano sa inyo ang attitude nila, oh, bahala kayo mag-aaway-away diyan. Magkakain lang sila ng popcorn. Believe me, pagka nanalo itong Duterte, you will regret that. Yeah. yeah. 'Di ba? Mm. Pride na lang 'yung nagsasabi sa inyong uh, ano, uh, Never Marcos, but dito it's not Marcos. You're not supporting Marcos per se, but you're preventing Sara from assuming mm-hmm. as president. ba? Diba? Yun yun, maliwanag. Clear cut yun, sa, yeah. Yes, maliwanag sa amin yun. Ngayon dun sa, ano, sa 2028, dun sa saan po position, dapat mag-prepare na lang yung 2028. Diba? Okay, i-prevent nyo yung uh, PI. O sige, prevent nyo. Kasi pag pre-revent yun, di magkakaroon ng 2028. Right. Pero kung masyado tayong in the heat na naman dun sa tactical battles, next thing you know, 2028 na. Pakamot-kamot na naman tayo ng ulo kasi wala mm-hmm. nag-prepare. So Hindi focus on strategy, should... not tactical differences and all that. Yes. Dapat hand in hand yun. May tactical battles, yeah. merong strategic yeah. ano, uh, preparation. Yeah. Di ba? So yun dapat. Hindi na nag-ano na. Kaya... And in that regard, you segue ko lang. That's why I'm already um, convincing uh, members of the pink movement to start ano, um, promoting or pushing for Risa Ontiveros as the new leader ng, ng pink movement. Kasi I believe uh, siya talagang ano siya, hindi siya bumibitaw. No? Hindi yung pag natalo ka, bumitaw ka na sa national. Ano, as if the, the world stopped nung nung natalo ka, hindi ganun. Tuloy-tuloy yung problema and Risa, Senator Risa is, is there. No? Yeah. And uh, kumaga, she's doing the, the right things, uh, uh, the right things that a leader of the opposition right. should do. I mean, I think yeah. a good news because I just confirmed kanina lang uh, that there are a number of unpublished surveys that show na Sarah is no longer the lead. That actually Rafi Tulfo mm-hmm. has overtaken her in two quarters, not one quarter, but two quarters mm-hmm. already. Now, of course, you would say that, oh, may marami dyan, ayaw rin kay Tulfo. Of course, we can have a long conversation about Tulfo. But for me, actually, that opens the field, right? Because that means yes. the 60% uni team no longer exists, as if it ever existed. But if Sarah is just getting around 20, 25% Terry Price, that's the same number she had in 2021. And if Tulfo is getting now 30% or more, then that means there's still 40% plus up for grabs. And Perhaps this opens the space for a third candidate for Risa Ontiveros or even some team-up. I don't know. Would you think a tool for Risa team-up also could make sense? I mean, I'm just throwing out these scenarios because I want people to imagine new horizons. Na hindi pwede popcorn yes. lang tayo forever. Because at some point, yeah. you're, you're going to be the popcorn of other people. If puro popcorn ka lang, ikaw ang maging ulam at some point. So I really appreciate yung sinasabi no. Don't forget, eye on the ball. Eye on the ball. And ako, I would like to validate yung, ano, yung uh, information mo about the unpublished service because our own Magdalo survey, which uh, concluded just last week, uh, ano, uh, validated that information. Tulfo is also number lamang, one now. Oh, yeah. lamang si, That's it. Si Tulfo. And, and yung, ano, we just uh, less than two weeks ng open war between the Dutertes and the Marcos. Talagang tinamaan yung mga Dutertes. And yun sa ICC question namin, yung ICC question nga namin is more uh, direct, ano, na ano, ano ang inyong opinion sa nalalapit na pag-aresto kay Rodrigo Duterte ng ICC, International Criminal Court, yun yan. Ang, ang choices, sang-ayon, hindi sang-ayon, at walang opinion. Hmm. Ang yung sang-ayon, nag-increase siya from 13% to 18%. Hmm. Tapos yung uh, ay yung uh, disang ayon na uh, bumaba siya from 32 to 31 no na narrow yung gap in just less than 2 weeks and yung walang opinion ito kasi yung refuge eh. mm. sa the thing about uh, Filipino respondents sa Filipino uh, voter is pa safe kailangan meron kang refuge yeah. para yeah. sa kanya kasi yeah. hindi niya baka samain siya dun sa totoong sentimento niya correct, correct. so that is the 
walang opinion. Kasi maliwanag naman kung kung talagang makaduterte ka at ayaw mong maaresto siya, isabihin mo yung di, yeah, exactly. di, di kasangayon. It's yeah. there. The choice is there. Pero bakit walang opinion sinabi mo? Because you don't care at all about Mr. Duterte. Uh, so pag susumahin mo yon yung 18% and 47%, that's 65% na uh, uh, technically in favor of uh, uh, Duterte being arrested, ha? Kasi yung question ng, ay, ng SWS... Uh, it's just cooperation is or, or... Investigation, or investigation no? cooperation. Yeah. Ito hindi. Interesting. Arresto. Very interesting. So, yeah. So, okay, so just to put it, so I think both of us have confirmed from the data we have, now unfortunately the publisher for some reason, is that Tulfo is now number one. So Sara is no longer a foregone conclusion. And the trajectory mm. is in not in favor of Sara. It's actually the other way around, uh, regardless yes. of whether you like Tulfo or not. But the second and even more important is the fact that majority, 51% uh, uh, want ICC to investigate, 57% want BBM administration to cooperate, and then base sa sinab, sabi nyo, only around 30% are against arrest. So yes. that means only third. majority, 6 out of 10, are open to the idea of an arrest warrant. I iba yes. yun, na hindi yes. sinama sa SWS. Yeah. So I, I really appreciate this intervention because... These are numbers. These are data. This is the reality. Hindi yung sa social media, hindi yung sinasabi ni Boljack TV, whatever. Yung mga, we're talking about systematic numbers that we have there, right? And, and, and probably they also know about it, no? The other side. I think, I think yeah. they, they're not, and, you know, they know these things, yeah. Oh, and the, uh, no, no, the, we've been tracking, no? So the, the last survey we had, uh, we conducted last August. So, right. ngayon, um, January, so basically six months after, tinitignan namin. So, tumataas yung, habang tumataas yung awareness about the ICC, tumataas yung in favor, tapos bumamaba yun. Right. Uh, no? And the bulk neto is in Mindanao, nung mga ayaw. No? But uh, Luzon, Visayas, basically, ano na siya, I, pwede na siyang isuka, no? Kung baga sinusuka na siya. Or willing silang uh, i pa isuko si Duterte right. and uh, it won't uh, matter in their daily lives ganun uh sir uh -huh. does that also uh, i mean of course I, I don't know how religious you are but i mean does that also kind of restore your faith in the filipino people kasi parati mo inisip na you know i mean ejk this is a horrible thing i mean you know i mean this was a human rights catastrophe this is a this is an affront to conscience of any you know true person of faith i don't know christian ka or whatever religion mm -hmm. For me, this kind of proves that it was really a climate of fear, right? Na a lot of this was disinformation, exaggeration, yeah. performative, climate of fear. Now na hindi, siya, hindi sila nakakatakot sa karamihan ng mga no, tao, may, medyo lumalabas na yung mga totoong sentimento ng tao. Diba? Parang ganun ang basa ko yeah. dito eh. Na-exaggerated yung mga superlative approval-approval. It's like approval of Putin in Russia. Do you think anyone yeah. in his right mind, pag tinawag mo sa, oh, Sir, what is your opinion of Putin? Like, there's no reason. You're gonna say, I mean, yung mga nagsasabi no, sobrang tapang mga yan. Kasi, di ba? I mean, yeah. Same. Same with, uh, kunyari, sa North Korea. I can imagine 99.5% ang approval rate. Baka yeah. lang pa sa 100% pa nga. Oh, eh. oh. <laughs> Sigurista. So, ganun, ganun yun. Kaya nga, when, when we do ano, approval, uh rating yung yung question is ano ka ba ano to uh, lima yung choices namin right. kasi so kailangan mo magbigay ng mm, oh, ng refuge yeah, yeah, exactly ng refuge sa kanila na dito, dito yeah, ako yeah. magtatago oh, oh dito ako magtatago but still kung ano ka uh, favorable ka sa kanya eh bakit hindi mo isinulat yon di ba but dito ka sa walang opinion kasi kumaga uh, I, you, you just ano ka uh, you want to play it safe or good natured ka but hindi kaya ng sikmura mo magbigay ng positive statement yeah, yeah. towards him so ganun yung I believe uh, there's something wrong with the questions also and um, pero ito um, kaya nga hindi na namin ano yun eh yung approval we believe wala sa ganong value no wala sa ganong value May value lang yan, siguro yung performance, feel good lang doon sa mga nakaupo. Yeah. But still, makita mo historically, bakit yung chief justice ang pinakamababa? Yeah. It's not because they're of very lax. or merit, but, exactly, yeah. Oh, hindi, hindi lang nila alam what this guy is doing or what, ano, out of sight, out of mind lang sila, parang ganon. 
Kaya itong ano, itong nangyari na open war, palagang tinamahan si si Duterte sa Luzon. Lalo na bumaba siya, no? Uh, I still believe na kung tatakbo tong senador ay eh, mananalo 'yan. And yun ang kailangan bantayan ng Marcos administration. Ito ang Digong himself, not not the son. Digong, not, yes. Yeah, okay. oh, mm. Because if he wins as senator, um, may platform siya. More, most likely, magiging senate president yan. Yeah. And if then he will count the, oh. Oh, if he will count the um, possible uh, voters for him in the senate, aabot na mga 14, 15 yan. So he will be senate president. Pag nag senate president yan, he will hold this administration hostage. Grabe, no? And, and, and ano yun? Uh, uh, mabigat yun. He can summon people through subpoena and he, he can even issue a warrant of arrest. So whip, so, whip na yan. Whip na yan. Yan. Gagawin din niya oh. as whip to whip everyone yeah. right and left. Yeah. Daughter, that's daughter niya, and, Vice President. Eh. No. And kung hawak na lila yung Senado, ba, the, the group of GMA can make their move sa House Kasi yeah. sigurado may impeach ito kasi uh, one or two votes away na lang yan for an, from an impeachment. So I didn't think uh, yeah, no, hindi out of the woods ang Marcos administration. They will have to be vigilant all the way. no And in, a, in a sense, Senator, you're saying the opposition should be also vigilant for 2025. Of course, eye on the ball 2028, support Riza yeah. as the candidate. But as early as 2025, yeah. if, if Digong comes back, if, if, if the plan works, yes, legally it doesn't give you an immunity from ICC. But yeah. politically, yeah. it gives you so much power and platform. And as I said, that's where I'm a bit worried because I feel like si BBM is not that hawkish eh, hawkish to deal with that very scary situation na yeah. dalawang house. And then there's a China element, which I think I want to discuss yeah. this in our last part very shortly. I hope we can catch up again soon, Senator. At least I feel, we, you can see we're very comfortable and I think people are loving our conversation even if they're just hearing your audio, Muna. There's a huge number of people are listening to us right now. Let's talk about this issue of national interest in China. Um, for a moment, especially yung mga nakikinig sa atin ng Never Marcos, I mean, we can go through a long list of your dissatisfaction with BBM, okay? Gets ko yan. But this issue of West Philippines is something very serious, right? Because in a way, in a way ang Pilipinas ay parang Berlin in the 1950s. Talaga gitna tayo ng dalawang higante. Obviously, China, US is an ally and China is a threat. But the superpowers are all here. Ang alam ko, lahat ng intel assets ng isa nandito na eh, di ba? Um, they're, they're trying to fight. And of course, they have their proxies. We don't even need to spell this out. So a lot is at stake here. A lot of big geopolitical events. And kaya nga, you go to US, tayo nag-abroad. Nakikita mo, they pay attention kung Pinoy ka ngayon. Kasi we are a very important country. But speaking of that, the Philippines is also going through some interesting changes in its national security doctrine. I mean, we announced at um, what, what is it, nine trillion pesos AFP modernization act, uh, getting submarines, etc. Navy atom background, you know, uh, Senator Trillian. Yes, your yes. dad was also yeah. Navy, right? So yeah. it makes you even more relevant because a lot of this is about submarines and warships, etc. First, what is your take on this U.S.-China competition part and how much the opposition should be also vigilant? Na hindi ito dang da- drama lang dalawang pamilya. This is the drama of global geopolitics in the 21st century. Na nakatawan nandito tayo sa gitna. And we also have our own interests, of, of course, the West Philippine Sea and Taiwan even. Uh, so yeah. inevitably the issue of ETCA. But, but the, the other one also I want to ask is, where do you see this issue of modernization of AFP? Do you think realistically we can become a force in our own right? Sorry, I'm, I'm throwing all of this because we were talking about it earlier. Can we a little bit discuss about the US-China aspect and then transition to AFP and West Philippine Sea? Okay, uh, well, let me just ano, um, add a dimension to the previous conversation. Natin. The geopolitical situation uh, between the, itong, itong China and the, the U.S., ito na ngayon uh, can be, ano, uh, is part of the dimension dito sa Duterte, yeah. Marcos, ano, uh, ano to, rift, ano. Right. Kaya with China backing the Dutertes, kasi alam nila in, in a snap, uh, mag-ship ka agad pagka Sarah assumes as president, immediately magpa-pro-China policy ka agad yan. Uh, within 24 hours, ihinto yung EDCA and everything. Ngayon, lahat ito, I believe, is um, anchored on the basic issue na whether China will reclaim Taiwan or not. So based on the 
um, intelligence uh, information, they plan to make a move within the next few years. So, by 2027. So what China is trying to prevent is any possible hindrance to that plan. Mm. And ang hindrance doon, ang primary hindrance doon would be the ability of the US to to engage wow. in a in a uh, uh, what's this in a war, no? Support kinetic, war. Uh, Ayun, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Importante yung mga forward operating bases yeah. or um, let's say EDCA, itong EDCA bases na ito can be Ano ito eh? uh, technically forward operating bases, uh, once fully operational siya. Ngayon, iniiwasan ng China yon. And uh, in full swing na yung development na ito, once uh, fully operational na siya, yeah. uh, it cannot be undone. Diba? So the time to move would yes, be itong yeah. mga panahon na yan. Kaya nga itong auster uh, uh, plots, against the Marcoses are real and imminent. No? Kaya yun yung nakikita kong pinaguhugutan ng lakas ng loob ni Duterte. Kasi you don't just do an open war like that against uh, Marcos na no, wala kang ano, uh, nasa likod. No? So ngayon, yun yung, oh, yun yung tinitignan natin. Ngayon, dito naman sa foreign policy shift, actually yun yung um, isa sa pinakang nag- nagulat ako, eh, no? I did not expect that, see that coming during the elections and after. Yeah. So when the president officially shifted to, back to the Western allies, talagang parang, wow, galing nun, di ba? Talagang na tinalikuran ito. Then ito na ngayon, yung ating uh, AP modernization. Itong AP modernization, Talagang um, hindi talaga tayo makakalapit dun sa sa level ng ng China. Pero meron tinatawag na uh, credible defense oh. posture. Pero tinanggal na, na yung minimum eh, di ba? Hindi na tayo wala minimum, na yung minimum. Credible oh. defense tayo. So we want to be kind of oh, like a middle power. De- kind of a, you know, a, a decent oh. armed forces. Hindi lang yung minimum lang na small power na poison shrimp. At saka ano kasi, kailangan nating kumaga um, ma-break in. Yeah. Sa technic- uh, technological divide eh. Kasi right. from World War II vintage ships ngayon, missile ships na in-operate nyo, it will take ano eh, a, a culture building eh. Sa Navy, you know, yung how to maintain those things, how to operate those things. Kailangan nun eh. So itong mga lead-in uh, uh, corvettes or frigates that we have, it this will prepare us for more modern platforms uh, in the coming years. Tapos itong submarine, no? itong submarine, kailangan natin talagang matutong gumamit niyan. Yeah. No? And uh, that will also force us to have yung mga mga charts, naval charts na kasi yung mga charts natin walang pang, ano, pang submarine. Ano? Uh, maraming mga aground dyan pagka yeah. nagkano. So, we can we, uh, we should have that uh, those things available for us so itong mga aircraft yung mga lead in fighters from korea sasabihin nila that's no match from the fifth generation fighters ng ng china but it will prepare the fighters again dun sa supersonic na ano na Na, na planes kasi before that mga subsonic ano lang tayo eh yeah. mga tora tora kasi nawala na yung mga F5 so kailangan ma ma ano sa mga reintroduce yeah, yeah, yung exactly. capacity na ganun yeah. pero ang maganda dito sana ang na-overlook lang do sa modernization natin is kailangan explore natin yung mga unmanned unmanned systems asymmetric drones and uh, oh, yeah, just kasi, like yeah exactly yeah. like what uh, you know, Russia, Ukraine, Ukraine, Persian Gulf, oh, yung Iran, US, yes. yung mga ganyan. Yes, there's a lot to learn, yeah. So, yan kasi, uh, for the developing countries like like us, ito yung kahit pa paano, baka mag-level ng playing field kasi hindi ito ganong kamahalan, hindi yeah. rin ito, ano, but ito yung technology na ngayon. Ito na yung papasok yung technology. Eventually, magiging, ano na eh, obsolete na yung mga man the uh, yeah. uh, jets and the ships so ito na yung systems kailangan na natin simulan ito habang hindi pa ano um, hindi pa huli so all of these things uh, ano naman i think kay ano 
um, going into the right direction. And, and they're Gibbon. So, so you, you think generally we're moving in the right direction. Thank you so much for that, Senator Dinas. Actually, we can go on and on about this. Mahabang usapan yung submarines pa lang, medyo mahabang usapan yun. You know, we can talk about the beat, the options out there by Koreans, even Italians apparently in addition to French. Yes. So medyo technical French. issue yan. Uh, so ayokong, we can have a separate one. Hopefully, we can catch up on that soon. Uh, but thank you so much, uh, Senator Trillianes. I mean, since last time we discussed, I'm, I'm glad to see medyo maaliwalas na yung mga <laughs> kasama natin. Those were the days. They were very, very difficult. Yeah, I think yeah. kalbo pa ako nung time na yan. Tapos I, I, I gained weight. I mean, I look at tot- totally different guys. So th- those were not easy days for, for a lot of us who yeah. cared about the Philippines, cared about the West Philippines, he cared about the lives of Filipino people, cared about uh, the dignity of our nation. So I'm glad that we're moving in a lot of direction. I'm glad, and thank you, Senator Trinas, for this very honest conversation about, you know, it, it's not about choosing between greater evil and lesser evil. It's not about having popcorns. It's about understanding that there are orders of magnitude of difference in terms of the threats to the constitutional order and the democracy we're facing. But ako, I really appreciated this emphasis na eye on the ball 2028, but also don't forget, baka 2025 pa lang, big moves could happen. Yeah. Thank yes. you so much, uh, Senator. I, I know there's more we can discuss, but I'd rather keep it for future episodes. Uh, I think one and a half hour na tayo, just like that. Because I'm sure mm-hmm. there'll be more drama and bardagulan and plot twists as we get near to 2025 elections. Thank you, Senator, for, for sharing your, your views. Is there anything you want to share on the record? We can have a discussion off the record later on um, before we yeah. wrap up this very interesting discussion. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Richard, for inviting me finally to your program. Oh, and, as uh, always. Yeah, we'll be looking forward to more discussions with you. Of course. You. Uh, busy rin kayo. And of course, um, I think uh, people have had the pleasure of also catching you on Christian's uh, show, the other great yeah. political podcast. So I'm glad na medyo active na rin kami ngayon sa YouTube. Hindi lang yung mga <laughs> alam mo na, di ba? So hopefully we'll have more of you. Eh, si Ronald Liamas, kan, ginawa ko ng co-host. Eh. May R&R na kami. So baka next time mag rr mag RRT na tayo <laughs> mag threesome tayo sige, na sige. analysis thank yeah, you very much yeah. Senator and talk to you soon thank you God bless thank you bye Richard God bless Whew. thank you very much guys uh, pasensya medyo uminit uminit tingnan nyo nag blush na ako sa init yan I mean medyo mainit init yung discussion to be honest actually mainit literally dito uh, bumaba ako from bag yan lamig sa bag ganun well, guys, again, a reminder, uh, this was a conversation. So, dun sa mga ahen yung nagsabi, oh, ahen, magsalita ka This is a conversation. So, hindi siya interview. At uh, alam niyo na, dati pa lang, meron tayong mga interviews and conversation with Senator Trillanes. What I can say, though, is, hindi ko alam bakit, pero parang biglang mas kabado ako ngayon after conversation with with with, uh, with Sonny. Kasi pag si Ronald ang kausap ko, kahit seryoso yung topic and all, you know, I have a sense na makakaraos din tayo. With, with Senator Trillanes, I, I sense na he's also cautiously optimistic. But at the same time, iba pa rin yung gravity of the situation. I appreciate yung sinabi niya na yung mga iba dyan sa mga kasama natin na excited mag-popcorn lang, uh, things could change dramatically. Especially if Digong runs for Senate and wins the Senate and all of that. Uh, well, personally, I'm not counting on that. I would give it the at most 50-50 chance. But I'm glad that Senator Trillian's kind of put the warning out there. But guys, see, sabi niya, ngayon pa lang, dapat mag-invest ng opposition kay Riza Ontiveros. And he confirmed also two things. Rafi Tulfo is already the lead candidate for 2028. That doesn't mean Rafi Tulfo necessarily will be the next president. It just means that Sa- Sara is no longer the favorite. And importantly, not only majority of Filipinos want ICC probe, but only a small minority of Filipinos right now are against even a warrant of arrest. So very, very important new interventions. At yung surveys ni sinabi ni Senator Trillianes. On that note, I hope you appreciated this conversation in the interview. Uh, and I hope we'll have more regular of that. Oh, nag, nag-propose na ako RRT na next time. Uh, Trillianes, Ricardo, and, and Ronaldo. All right? God bless and talk to you soon.